Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. I thought I'd take a time, some time to go over some of the games I've played this year, uh, the games that I like the most, games that I like the least, and have a look at perhaps some of the new things that are coming down the pike and some things that I might play. I'm not sure how far we'll get in 10 or 15 minutes, but we'll try and keep it succinct and brief. And uh, without any further ado, we'll get started. Uh, I will say one thing. No, I won't. I'll wait till later. All right, uh, let's see. Top to bottom, uh, favorite games played. One of, the, one of the interesting games I played this year that I thought was kind of cool was For the People. And I only got to play four or five turns of it, but could really see how the game could be A, a lot of fun, and B, very interesting, and really give us a, a strong feel for the dynamics of the American Civil War. So, been a long time coming for me to actually get involved with that uh, particular title, but I'm glad I did. So that was one of the first titles that I enjoyed. And I've got a little list here, so uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, who was getting all excited about posting messages? Okay, so that was quite funny. That was my children uh, sending me text messages while I'm um, recording, telling me that... I should say happy holidays because it's more politically correct and I said kiss my honey. So, Merry Christmas yet again. Hopefully there'll be no more text, be there six feet away from me sending me text messages. So I thought that was kind of cute but annoying. I have no idea where I got up to. I think I was talking about four people and I think I was done with it. Just suffice to say it was an entertaining, uh, an entertaining little game. Was the music too loud? Possibly. Uh, Next on my list, Swords and Shields. I've actually played three different Swords and Shields scenarios. It's a game system that comes out of Tiny Battles uh, Publishing that is uh, designed by Tom Russell. Really uh, enjoyed that, A, because the rules are short, B, I could see them being used with minis, C, they're clean rules and give you great uh, flavor and uh, just enough detail from at a, ta at a kind of tactical scale. It's a battle level system uh, to invoke the, the period and the flavor of things. You put a few little special rules in for each battle and then all of a sudden you've got a great little game. Uh, not enormously impressed with the production quality of the, of the games, but for 20 bucks, you've got two battles for $20. You can play them two or three times, and some of the special rules for Agincourt, for example, really, really threw off a lot of flavor uh, for a battle that is a very difficult battle to model and has been tried several times without much success. I thought that particular title actually uh, came across very well. Now, I recently just sold that to a friend of mine, uh, it and the other battle, it's on the other side, I forget what it's called now, but uh, anyway. Fine games, really enjoyed them. I'll uh, be looking forward for more of those from uh, Mr. Russell. I'll be in, in, looking forward to enjoying more of that system. So have a look for Sword and Shield. Uh, you can find, so there are three battles total so far and hopefully uh, there'll be more coming out of Tiny Battles Publishing. So that's a new publisher for 2015 and I think they've really you know, hit their stride in that budget game category. Great one, great, uh, games to slap in your briefcase or your bag and, and take off on a business trip and you can play a game in an hour or two hours. And really very, very cool. So uh, high points on my list for that guy. And then we move down into something a little bit more complicated. Uh, um, Flight of the Eagle is a <coughs> this system here. It's a play-by-mail game and I think over the course of four or five months, we, we went through an exercise trying to do the Battle of Waterloo campaign, which was a lot of fun, uh, very, very interesting and very, very engaging. Trying to GM that by myself was probably a mistake, particularly when things got a little contentious in regards to rules or people disagreeing with how your combat worked. And I think at some point we had to kind of let the the system be the system and accept the abstracted nature of the combat and get into what the the role is that you're playing and I as GM, you as 
general of a core, what are you doing and what's your, what's your function and focus on the decisions you're making versus, you know, whether it's my creative writing when I sent you what's going on or the fact that, you know, cavalry's attacking infantry unsupported, it, it just shit happens, right? So you got to either play the game and accept it as it is from that perspective, I think, or you, or I should have had given you the opportunity to resolve the combats yourselves but in an effort to try and make it easier for you, I made it a lot harder for myself. So I found resolving each particular combat, although it's just a handful of die rolls, keeping track of six or seven of those combats per uh, game cycle became a little bit onerous. I had a fairly complicated spreadsheet running to keep track of that. What does that mean? It means this is a freaking awesome system, so much so that I went and bought uh, Volume 3, which allows you to pretty much play a campaign and at the country level and do recruiting, uh, hire, train, uh, accumulate funds so that you can buy your armies and all that sort of fun stuff. Really, really interested in trying to do that with a, with a handful of folks. And probably have a staff. I think I'll have a staff of folks who'll help me do that. That'll be 2017, who knows when that'll be, but I'm very interested in the rule set because I think it might be a, a, a nice, Nice way to experience that Napoleonic era, larger campaign style uh, game, which is really not available to us today in a, in a well-functioning system that I'm aware of. Uh, I know there's nations in arms and some other things and empire in arms, but they're all uh, either really, really old and come down to a single die roll at some point in the situation, or they've got crappy rule sets that uh, have not been revised or updated enough that from the folks I trust who say that it's it's a potential that they're potentially good titles that they're worth trying to jump into. So we so I'm looking at this thing as that uh, as a uh, maybe the next title. Now while I'm on the theme of Waterloo, uh, Fallen Eagles, 1815. Let me just oh and so this was a Pratson Editions game. So it's a French uh, publisher. This is also a French French publisher. Uh, it's Hexasim. You know, when I first played this, I thought, oh man, you know, this is leaving too much out of the, the that, that core Napoleonic era, full of theme and flavor thing that you need to have. And, and I thought, well, you know, a game that doesn't deal with facing and doesn't deal with the proper artillery and cavalry charges and squares and things like that is not a tactical game. And it's, it's probably just a, you know, highly abstracted thing and it's not cool. Having played the only the, the Prussian scenario when the Prussians arrived uh, scenario, I took all that back because the game clearly states up front that it's trying to put you in you know this basically a core commander situation, and you're entrusting that your divisional commander is going to know which way to face their freaking force. Right, number one. Number two, they're going to know when to get into a square or not get into a square. And the cavalry is going to gain the, uh, derive the benefit of uh, the enemy either being in a square or not being in a square, subject to the DRM tables. So it takes a lot of the minutiae that can bog down a tactical game and abstracts it enough so that you focus on what's important. And some of the, the ordering system in here and the mechanics around that, movement, combat, commands, command radius and things like that, really come together nicely and I think the designer has done an, an, an admirable job here of capturing the feel and flavor of the era and of this particular combat. I will say I have some issues with the map uh, on you know, the left flank around Hougoumont is uh, arguably incorrect uh, particularly if you talk to folks who actually walk the terrain uh, you could also you, so you, you have that so hard facts tell you it's wrong. Uh, other game systems and other game maps will show you that it's wrong, potentially wrong. And it will also, so, so there's that. And that, that's kind of a letdown for me in that this, this portion of the map over here is uh, much, much easier to maneuver in and that therefore changes, I think, the it's gonna change the dynamic of the campaign game. Having said that, I haven't played the campaign game, so I can't tell you whether that's actually a fact or not. 
this will be played at some point next year in, in uh, 2016. Great production value, beautiful maps, beautiful pieces, good rule set. Really, really enjoyed this game. So that was very, very high on my list. There's no way I'm going to get uh, best and worst done in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So we're going to just going to do this in two videos. Excuse me. Okay. Next game on my list that I thought was particularly uh, interesting is Hero Specific. Lock and load title. Mark Walker designed this quite a long time ago, and it's been forever and coming. And I had uh, over the last you know two years given lock and load a lot of a lot of grief over the poor production quality, poor production scheduling, and. Uh, just one misstep after another, just mistake after mistake, and uh, poor staffing, all sorts of issues. And they really, uh, this was my make or break title for me. I'd seen uh, lots of new titles be, uh, you know, uh, David Heath, the new owner, sent me, you know, some complimentary stuff and some things that I'd already ordered and all that sort of good stuff and showed me, hey, look, you know, things are getting better. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's good. Things aren't getting better, that's great. But I want, I want my heroes of Pacific. It's been years, I want it. And I want and it better be right type of thing, otherwise I'm kind of done. Uh, not that I you know, said that in so many words, but I, well, maybe I did actually, <laughs> but anyway. This, the production quality, the, I like the artwork. I love the counters. I love the maps. I love the X maps. I didn't think I was gonna be a big fan of the X maps. I really wanted to keep my, my small mounted uh, map boards, but once you play on the X maps, you're not going to go back to the mounted boards. There's no need to. The, the X maps are freaking awesome. So, this is, uh, and I'm not a huge uh, World War II tactical guy anyway. I really don't, for some reason, it doesn't click for me. I, 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 I feel like I'm playing, most of the time, you're playing some random scenario that's an approximation of a historical event. Even the even the ASL stuff, you know, you if you really dig into it, it's all uh, approximations and estimations. It's not uh, it's not hardcore. This is <coughs> what happened in a particular battle. It's always some subset of something that went on. So, so as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's mostly hypothetical anyway. So we might as well play World War Three, which is why I love Heroes of Gap. This has become one of my favorite titles to play as a tactical game. I've, I've done a half a dozen games of this already and thoroughly enjoyed it. I cannot speak highly enough of this. Many of the scenarios are quite large though, so if you're into smaller tactical games, this might not be for you uh, unless you want to use the battle generator, which is pretty freaking cool, and make your own smaller scenarios. Uh, once again, maybe you can, uh, you can try and make those more historical if you want, but uh, there are some large battles in this, which is kind of interesting. Uh, for a uh, tactical war game. Very, very good stuff, love it. All right, <coughs> where did that get us to? We've got to tick the little games off the list here. Otherwise, we're just not gonna make it. Carthage, yeah, so an oldie, but a, you know, not a moldy, right? This Carthage GMT's uh, Richard Berg's Ancient World series. This is a really fun game to play a pose. Uh, I played face-to-face, -face. I played uh, we did two campaigns, two small scenarios, and I started playing Hair Doctor uh, on Vassal, and you know, I, so I had, had some good exposure to this system. A lot of the campaign in the early stages does resolve around uh, one particular city that has to be acquired, Masana, and uh, or modern day Messina. And if uh, if you don't get that, if either side doesn't get that, it really can you know change things pretty dramatically but it's a really interesting title and uh, uh, it's well worth the extra effort and there is extra effort it's well worth the extra effort to go through and work out how to play this game properly and take your time with it and really enjoy it and soak it up because you are getting a true operational scale level experience in the ancient world uh, for the first Punic War and it's pretty freaking awesome and I can not recommend this highly enough. Uh, it's out of print. It's gonna cost you 70 bucks to buy it unpunched, maybe more. Uh, have a look for one of those. It's a, if you have any interest in operational scale agents, that's the game to go to. All right, 
Uh, and by the way, this is not a top 10. So it's just, this is the, the best of the games that I played this year. And it is what it is, right? So then, of course, look at this guy, right? Waterloo 200. You've seen me play it and be frustrated. You've seen me play it and ask uh, lots of questions online. And you've seen me then play it against the designer and have a truly epic uh, multi-hour knockdown, drag out experience. Uh, very, very cool game. Once again, this is a game where there are some abstractions that, you know, are going to be ahistorical in nature, frankly. You know, using cavalry in a, in a woods space is not cool, but there's a reason, there's no reason for it. It's just, you know, nothing's going to happen if you, in some cases, if you don't allow uh, a unit to go into the woods and fight, whether it happens to be cavalry or not, it's another thing. But you can house rule that you can't use cavalry, it just means you're going to have to do a little, you know, a little shuffling around. But what you are going to have to do with Waterloo 200 is play with the mindset of the commanders of the day. So if you're not thinking like Wellington was or thinking like Napoleon was, uh, you're going to have a really hard time. Uh, achieving anything like a victory or uh, an ahistorical victory for that matter. It's very hard for the French to win, but they can win. And if the British get silly and do something stupid, the Allies, then they're in big trouble. A great thought-provoking game, very interesting, and I really believe that it's a good introductory level game. The rules needed a little polishing, and I, I hope there'll be another revision of the rules to clean things up a little bit. But uh, fantastic stuff. Okay, so the game I enjoyed the most this year uh, is another older game. Uh, so, and by the way, uh, Waterloo 200, that's a Vento Novo game. Okay? Uh, Third World War. You know, this series, uh, four modules, you're, you're dropping 150 or 200 bucks probably to pick up uh, copies of them. I don't think you'll find anything unpunched. I've never seen an unpunched copy or set for sale, I don't think. Uh, I'd, be interested, I'd be mildly interested in acquiring an unpunched set if someone had one. That said, the, these four titles I played on Vassal and played once last year face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, all put together are a, a, a really rich and engaging experience that uh, uh, the game has stood the test of time. Chadwick's design philosophy is pretty robust. It really took what we thought was going on at the time back in the 80s, the, the best of uh, both armed forces capabilities and uh, put them into a system that stayed solid across a multi-year release timetable. I think that the games were released over two or three or four years. And that uh, the Persian Gulf is the piece de resistance uh, because it allows you to pull, put it all together, use these cards to activate the, activate the war, make the war kick off, so you get to war turn zero, then roll into war turn one. Uh, so this might be five or six turns prior to that where you're, you're, you're manipulating uh, factions in the Persian Gulf area to make something happen so that you force your enemy to war or you you force their hand you you force yourself into war or push yourself into war so that you can have the upper hand uh, pretty clever system it's going to be really hard for the soviets to win unless they get real lucky uh, it's going to be very hard for them to win if they do not have uh, clear weather on turn one and it's going to be very hard for them to maintain air superiority and momentum and all the rest of it. Uh, the US is going to be uh, pressed hard though. They're going to be pressed hard, particularly if they can't use nuclear weapons in turn five and six. Uh, they may also be, uh, there, there may be an argument to say that you know, some of the US forces are a little too strong. Some of those divisions are a little too tough. But overall, I think the game is pretty well balanced. It's pretty tight. It ignores the naval aspects of the situation, which I think is probably for the better. It's done in an abstract manner, but uh, nothing too too egregious. I, I love that game. I've played it a lot now. I've played three or four 
session to the Battle of, Battle for Germany by myself, and I've played uh, uh, two campaign scenarios as well. So enjoyed that immensely. They're, they're my top titles for 2015. I hope you enjoyed the quick little rundown and overview of those titles. Go out, get yourself uh, some uh, eggnog, watch this, enjoy the, enjoy the video, and enjoy the rest of your Christmas, and I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll be back in a few minutes, and we'll talk about the games I like the least.